Right. The second part we want to take a look at is to actually use primary source documents to support the argument that we are making. Okay. And we we're answering the question, who's to blame, the U.S. or the Soviet Union? And we've gone through a series of documents which you can use as evidence okay, for blaming one side or the other. Okay. So we're going to start off here uh, evaluating documents number one and document number two. So if you needed to, go ahead and uh, Go to the website to find the documents, take the documents that have been given to you, or go to the PDF uh, that is provided. And again, within the scope of the narrative essay, you need to use at least eight documents okay, in order to support the argument that you're making. You're going to do 10 today, okay, but okay, you need to uh, use at least eight okay, in your narrative essay. So let's go and start off with uh, one that everybody's going to have in their narrative essay is uh, the part whereby the United States and the Soviet Union they are going to cooperate with one another. Okay? So that's part that you're going to have okay, in uh, this particular essay. Now, one that you could use is to talk about the pre-war period where both sides distrusted one another. So let's go and take a look at document one and document two together. Okay? So go to the material at hand here. So um, go ahead and what I want you to do is to go ahead and reread document one and document two. And you're going to fill out the graphic organizer okay, that is provided okay, in the primary source a document. So it should be a, in a, this section, a part two primary source analysis here. A, so read document one and read document two right now a, and try to fill this out as best as you can, possibly can. And what you're looking for is the following one. And you've got to determine who's more at fault. So read it with that in mind here. Okay? Uh, secondly, you're going to make an argument. So you're going to decide, all right, one of them, either the USSR or the United States is at fault. And, and what you're going to do is to provide a reason why. So provide analysis for this okay, in this case. Okay? And then from there, okay, take a short quote. Okay? If it is a document, if it's an image, go ahead and make some sort of description of the image, something that will support the analysis that you're making here. So don't not just anything random, but something that will support Okay, this particular case here. Okay, so do keep that in mind. Okay, and then finally, okay, once you've completed both documents, this entire section, make a conclusion on all of the analyses that you've made so far. So pause the video right here, go ahead and do document one. Okay, uh, at this point, if you've, you should have completed document number one, let me go ahead and provide what that might look like in terms of interpretation here. So according to the document, uh, you could read it as the Soviet Union is more at fault. Okay? And uh, analysis would look something like this. The Soviet Union sought to eliminate capitalism both within and outside its borders. Thus, it will always seek to challenge the policies of the United States. This statement particularly uh, is analysis, right? It's an interpretation of the document at hand. And then once you have this analysis made, you're going to support it okay, with a quote from the document. Okay? The Soviet Union says, uh, eliminating the remnants of capitalist classes in battles with enemies, both internal and external as well. So that's document number one. Go ahead and do the same with document number two and read the document, determine whose side is more at fault. And I'm going to provide a sample for both of them. So go ahead and pause the video right now. All right, you should be back. Let me provide a, an example of using document two okay, so that you're pointing fingers at the USSR. Right? So in this case here, you've read document two okay, and uh, okay, you can provide analysis that looks like this. Okay? The Soviet Union had invaded and occupied other countries before and during World War II. The U.S. was justified, therefore, okay, in being wary of the Soviet Union. They've seen it in the past. And so even though they're allies, they have to look at them and say, like, look, we know exactly who you are. And in that article, it states Russia's aggressive tendencies seen in the absorption of the Baltic states. The war with Finland is evidence of Russia's unworthiness. And keep in mind, you want to keep these quotes as short as possible. So you'll note that the usage of the brackets here, what this does is that it puts in a, uh, uh, some of your words here within a quote so that you can use it so it makes sense in your writing. And also, please utilize the ellipses. Uh, this shows that you're really thinking about the document. You're just taking parts that uh, you think is worthwhile because you don't want to just simply have a large block quote. You want to narrow it down to the parts that you want in terms of saying, look, it's taken countries in the Baltic states, it's declared war in an attempt to invade Finland, and these are the specific parts of the quotes that you want to be able to generate. Okay? Now, if you want to look at it the other way around and you want to blame the United States, okay, here is a possibility. Now, this is a conclusion. We'll get to that. We'll come back to that part here. 
as well. Okay, so if you want to blame the United States, you can say this. Okay, even when the Allies depended on the F war efforts of the Soviet Union, American attitudes towards their allies were extremely negative and accusatory. How so? A document states that Russia was represented as an aggressive and amoral power. They have no morals. Okay? They, a people have to be awakened to them. And he calls it a menace, right? Here's this other country we're a, a, a allies with. And they said they're a menace to society. They're a menace to the globe and so forth. They're aggressive. They have no morals. Okay? And so despite working together, like you're talking trash about someone while you're trying to work with them, right? That's not a good attitude to have at hand here. And so once you've done both of these documents, here and you can go ahead and generalize and make a conclusion a based upon your interpretation of both of the documents a, in this next box right here the cwn a, um, part of it these are conclusions based upon your interpretation of the primary source documents okay then from there what you want to be able to do now is to use the documents from the events that you've already selected so again you've gone to the sequence you've selected these events a, and uh, a, you've noted the document number documents that will support that particular argument. So what you're going to do now is to actually evaluate those particular documents. So go and place the correct documents in here, a determine the fault, a provide your analysis, a, a quote or a description. And then from there, a, for each section, a, you're going to take these a, and summarize again sort of the big picture of what you're doing in your document analysis.